A sleepy corner of Waukesha County, the longtime home of a Catholic priest who is now getting a lot of attention for a shocking crime in Texas. 75-year-old Father Gerald Lunch is accused of sexually assaulting a woman in hospice care during her last rites. He's accused of inappropriately rubbing her chest with holy water and then lotion under her clothing. According to the assault charge in Austin, Texas, the victim told police it made her feel like a, quote, nasty, dirty piece of meat. Lunch served in the town of Delafield for more than 30 years as the director of the religious order known as the Schoenstatt Fathers, which helps operate a retreat center nearby. Online records indicate indeed Father Lunch did live in this house here until 2015 when he moved to Austin. No one answered when we knocked on the door this afternoon. How long have you been the director, Father? Oh, at least for 20 years. Lunch was interviewed on Eternal Word Television Network, or EWTN, in 2011, where he was described as the director of the German-based Catholic movement devoted to Mary. We try to say, okay, it doesn't really matter what prayer or how many prayers you say. You want to reflect the attitude of the Blessed Mother. But now he's been removed from any priestly duties in the Diocese of Austin and facing prison time if convicted. Nick Moore joining us live now. We've talked about this. For decades, he lived in the town of Delafield, but do we know if he worked as a parish priest here? Well, I did speak with the Archdiocese in Milwaukee. They tell me they're still checking their records, but they don't believe he ever served at a local parish, at least not in a regular capacity. There are no allegations against him here. All right, Nick Bohr in the newsroom. Thank you. A bomb threat shut down Alverno College. The school evacuated 1,700 students and staff. Milwaukee police brought out bomb-sniffing dogs to search campus. 12 News' Terry Sater is live at Alverno tonight. Terry, do police know who made the threat? Patrick, we're not hearing anything about that right now, but the school says the threat came through a letter found here this morning just before 9 o'clock this morning, and it triggered a campus-wide shutdown. We had a fire alarm go off, and they said that it was a bomb threat. Alverno College senior Donna Zayner is one of some 1,700 students evacuated just before 9 this morning. The college sent them across the street to Audubon High School for shelter because of a bomb threat that came in a letter. And then when they told us uh, that we had to evacuate and actually come to Audubon, um, that's when I realized it was pretty serious. Alverno closed the campus for the day, including the preschool. Milwaukee police and firefighters rushed in and began a search of one of the school's main buildings, the Reed Center. Police eventually brought in bomb-sniffing dogs. The threat came as a shock on a Monday morning to food service worker Tristan Grody. Were you concerned when you heard about the bomb threat? Um, I, was a, I was a little bit concerned, but honestly, I thought that maybe it was just a drill. I didn't really think much of it. Michaela Taggart works in one of two residence halls, also evacuated. Were you frightened this morning when this happened? Well, I was actually working the desk this morning in the res halls when I heard over the radio stuff going back and forth, so I was confused too from the very beginning. Alverno says a sweep of the campus revealed no additional threat. So what are they telling you now? That's pretty much it, so. to just go into the commons and wait it out. Terry, about that letter, do we know if the letter was mailed or how they found it? We don't know, Patrick. We only know, we asked the police department about it. They would only release that the letter came here before 9 o'clock this morning. No other details are being released right now. We do expect the campus to reopen tomorrow, Patrick. Terry Sater reporting live at Alverno College. A UWM professor is behind bars on felony charges of possessing child porn. WISN 12 News' Sheldon Dutez has reaction to the disturbing allegations detailed in a criminal complaint. According to the university's website, Dennis Tomaszek is a lecturer and researcher here at UW Milwaukee, but he's not giving any presentations on campus right now. He is in jail on five felony charges of possessing child porn. 12 News was there when authorities raided Tomaszek's St. Francis home last week. According to the criminal complaint, investigators got a tip from the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children about child porn linked to Tomaszek's Tumblr account. Authorities say they found disturbing images on his electronic devices. His neighbor doesn't want us to show her face, but she is appalled by the allegations. That's disgusting. I've lived on this block almost 20 years, and it's just disgusting. I hope he rots. While police were executing the search warrant here at Tomaszek's home, according to the criminal complaint, he became incredibly emotional and said he wanted to die. No one answered when I knocked, but at UWM, inside this academic building where Thomas Sheck works, students like Landon are concerned. 
I would say that's pretty shocking because I mean you kind of you know expect like obviously that they'd be like vetted or like they'd probably want to make sure that somebody um, who works there wouldn't do something like that. UW-Milwaukee released a statement to 12 News acknowledging the charges against Tomashek and said that personnel action is being taken, but they would not elaborate on what that action would be, citing they cannot comment on such matters. Reporting at UWM, I'm Sheldon Dutez, WISN 12 News. Tomashek is the second UWM faculty member charged with a crime this month. Health Sciences professor Anthony Azenabor faces charges of sexually assaulting a Ph.D. student. The man accused of killing the mother of his child, sparking an Amber Alert, asked for a new attorney. Darius Higgins was scheduled to appear in court today to face charges he shot and killed Sierra Robinson two weeks ago today. The hearing was postponed after Higgins asked for a private attorney. A person in Minnesota found the body of the couple's two-year-old daughter, Nolani Robinson, in a ditch days later. Her death remains under investigation. A large grass fire burnt part of the Havenswood State Forest on Milwaukee's north side. The smoke could be seen coming out of the forest near Sherman and Silver Spring. No word on what sparked this fire, but Mark, as we can see, fires can still burn even though the ground is still wet. I know it seems really weird because, of course, we had all that snow and the ground itself, you know, is still soggy, but it's what's on top, all that brush that's from last year, and that becomes a fuel that burns rapidly when you get low humidity like we have out there. Let's show you those dew point numbers. This is really, really dry air. It's a three degree dew point. That means there's just, just not much moisture. So everything dries out that's above the ground very rapidly. And so those fuels can quickly burn. In the meantime, if you're heading out for this evening, it's a little chilly out there. Temperatures in the 30s. Thankfully, the wind will start to die down when we warm things up to near 60 coming up in Weather Watch 12. We can never let this happen to another president again. The Mueller report may be finished, but the debate is far from over. Aixa Diaz reports from Capitol Hill on the congressional clash over the attorney general's summary. We're glad it's over. It's 100% uh, the way it should have been. President Trump pleased with the conclusion of the Russia investigation. According to Attorney General William Barr, Special Counsel Robert Mueller found no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, but didn't answer the question of obstruction of justice. That was left up to Barr and the Deputy Attorney General, and Barr says there was insufficient evidence to pursue charges. I don't think we should have our conclusions filtered through a Trump uh, appointee. Democrats say they don't trust Barr's conclusion on obstruction. They want to see Mueller's full findings and hear from the attorney general under oath. We need to dig into the question about obstruction of justice uh, because uh, that remains an open question. Republicans say it's time to accept the conclusions and move on. Millions of pages and documents and $25 million wasted of taxpayer dollars. That still isn't enough for Democrats. Senator Lindsey Graham says he wants to know more about what led to the investigation in the first place. Whether or not a counterintelligence investigation was opened up regarding the Trump campaign as a backdoor to spy on the campaign. President Trump says it wouldn't bother him at all if the report is made public, but the attorney general is the one who makes that call, and he says he's working to release as much as he can. On Capitol Hill, Aixa Diaz to be ISN 12 News. Patrick. Attorney General Barr could testify on Capitol Hill in the near future about the report. Democratic Congresswoman Gwen Moore of Milwaukee told 12 News the results of the report did not surprise her. We saw an attorney general who essentially auditioned for the job when he wrote a 19-page memo outlining how the President of the United States could not obstruct justice by, for example, firing uh, James Comey because he was, in fact, uh, the chief executive over the Justice Department. Republican Senator Ron Johnson posted his reaction on Twitter, writing, quote, we should all be happy the Mueller report did not establish members of the Trump campaign conspired with Russia. He went on to write, hopefully the attorney general can quickly conclude his final report and allow us to turn our attention to other challenging issues. ABC's coverage of the Mueller report continues on World News with David Muir. That's coming up immediately following our newscast. Commitment 2019 coverage, referendum confusion. The West Bend School District is asking voters for $47 million to build a new elevator elementary school and improve the two high schools. The district has sent out three different mailers informing voters what they're asking for. However, they received backlash when the latest mailer did not include a list of the interest costs. The superintendent says they're fixing that. 
who we believe that we can have everything ready to go to the post office by Wednesday afternoon. It will be identical to the third mailing other than on the left hand side rather than voting information. It will have information regarding the cost of the referendum. The election is one week from tomorrow. The two candidates for Wisconsin Supreme Court will meet face to face tomorrow right here on WISN 12. Mike Goucher will moderate the debate between Brian Hagedorn and Lisa Neubauer at the Marquette Law School. You can watch it live tomorrow night beginning at 7 o'clock. Well, the countdown is on until the Brewers home opener Thursday. WISN 12 News Hillary Mint shows us the final preps before first pitch. The grass is definitely greener inside Miller Park here. We are just three days to go before opening day here and the team is ready. The field crew getting this place ready. Some final touches happening here. Grow lights are on. Roof is open for some extra vitamin D. The brew crew are in action Thursday 110 against the Cardinals. They don't expect the roof to be open for the home opener, but the team says they are coming off an incredible season last year and want this season to be even more memorable. And I want fans to be excited and have high expectations. We're going to deliver the same great experience at Miller Park, clean ballpark, safe ballpark, affordable ballpark, the games on the field. I think we have an incredibly talented team. Guys that are hungry, worthy of the attention and focus that our fans are giving them. So just a few days to go before this place will be rocking for the home opener. Parking lots open up at 10 a.m. and the Brewers ask you allow plenty of time to get in. There's going to be thousands of people trying to get to their seats. So make sure you allow plenty of time to get through security to watch the game as the Brew Crew take on a new season. At Miller Park, I'm Hillary Mintz, WISN 12 News. The Brewers have not revealed who will be throwing out the first pitch. They're keeping that a secret for now. He represented a porn star in her lawsuit against the president. Now the high profile attorney charged with extortion, the international company from which he's accusing of trying to swindle $20 million. A massive recall that includes Wisconsin, the potential illness linked to avocados. And we are one week away from the debut of our new 9 p.m. newscast. Watch Derek Rose, Mark Baden and Dan Needles weeknights beginning next Monday on the Justice Network. You'll find it on 12.2 Spectrum Cable 985 and Charter Cable Channel. 180.
And a very brief look at traffic tonight. The big reason why is that we're seeing all green on the screen right here. Clearly must be the first day of spring break. Not a whole lot of traffic happening as we uh, zoom in here. You can't even find any red on the screen, which means we should all leave work early. Right, Patrick? Let's do it. All right. When do we go? You know, if anything, if anything <laughs> pops up, of course, we will let mm -hmm. you know. But well, he made headlines uh, representing porn star Stormy Daniels and her lawsuit against President Donald Trump. Now, attorney Michael Avenatti is facing charges. He tried to extort millions of dollars from Nike. Police arrested Avenatti in New York. Prosecutors there say he attempted to get $20 million from Nike by threatening to expose damaging information about the company. The Associated Press reports celebrity attorney Mark Garagos is a co-conspirator in the case. Prosecutors say an unnamed attorney joined Avenatti but they didn't charge him with a crime. By engaging in the conduct alleged in the complaint, Avenatti was not acting as an attorney. A suit and tie doesn't mask the fact that at its core, this was an old fashioned shakedown. Federal prosecutors in California also filed charges against Avenatti for wire and bank fraud for allegedly embezzling a client's money to pay his own expenses. The father of one of the children killed in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting has been found dead of an apparent suicide. 49-year-old Jeremy Richmond was the father of Aviel Richmond, one of the first graders who was killed in the 2012 shooting hurts, at the Connecticut uh, school. Then, his now. suicide comes after two survivors of the shooting at Florida's Stoneman Good Douglas High School took their own lives. Coming up new tonight on 12 News at 6, a $2 million Powerball winner in Racine. 12 News is live at the lucky gas station that sold the ticket. And a cash drawer bandit. Police need your help tracking down this man wanted for walking out of gas stations with the drawer in hand. That's coming up tonight at 6. Well, students of this month's top teacher call her a flicker of light. Sally Severson takes us to Waterford to visit Evergreen Elementary. Mrs. Wagner just gets sixth grade. Every day is different. Every day they bring something fun to the classroom, and so they keep me on my toes all the time. I just enjoy teaching them the material, everything about them. I just think they're great. She knows all of her students are individuals, and she tailors her teaching to their needs. Allowed the kids actually to have more of a voice, I think, in their learning, and um, it has also challenged the uh, teachers to make sure that the information they're providing is differentiated for each student. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wagner wants her students to enjoy school. She calls her teaching style firm, but casual. Sharing her passion for reading and learning is no joke. I try to have fun with them, joke around with them, um, but also let them know that we are here to learn and that it's very important that they um, are learning things that will help them grow as learners. Teaching sixth grade isn't always easy. We had students ask her a few questions. You seem super nice all the time and we seem annoying. Do we ever do things that bother you? <laughs> Let's just say you do things that challenge me. And so I find a way of working with that. That is a great response. That you is. do things that challenge me. I like that Sally <laughs> incorporated the students in the interviews, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you ask her the questions. Right. She also made a good point this morning about our cold day. Yeah, a month ago, we would have been <laughs> cheering for a day like this, Mark. We really would. So we're going to go with some perspective to start things off with. Let's talk about the temperatures a month ago. The high temperature was way colder. A month ago, it was 16 degrees for a high. In January, the high temperature on January 25th was 4. Today, we got to 38 degrees. Now, I know it was chilly with that wind off of the lake, but uh, that kind of puts it into correct perspective. All right, of course, we're talking cooler near the lake, but I want to start off with a broad scale, show you where the colder air is. Most of that's locked up to the north of us. The center of the high pressure is right over here in the Dakotas. That's kind of the center of the colder air. That's going to be with us still for tomorrow, but the big change comes as the wind direction. So we still have that northeasterly wind, and that's keeping us pretty chilly almost everywhere. It is a little bit warmer inland. Now tomorrow the wind goes out of the southeast, so we start warming things back up, and then it's out of the south and southwest as we head into Wednesday and Thursday which is going to coincide nicely with opening day. 36 degrees. It is beautiful out in terms of sunshine. Not nearly as many people out, though, as we had on Saturday or even yesterday before that cold front came in. 
To Delavan we go. Lake Lawn Resort, 44 degrees. Beautiful shot there. Into Milwaukee. Nice to see the sun hitting off the roof. It's too cold tonight. That's why the roof is closed because our temperature is going to drop down in the low to mid 20s. Opening day, 58. We still have a chance of getting to 60 if we can get some sunshine. There's a slight chance for showers, but for the most part, we should be pretty thrilled with these temperatures for opening day. It can be a lot, lot worse than this. Just three days away, 63 days until Memorial Day, 92 days until Summerfest. So we're really closing in on just three months away from Summerfest. We'll be talking about heat and humidity. I guess I'm kind of looking forward to that. You can see those temperatures near the lake in the mid 30s and you get to Waukesha. You're 39, 42 degrees in Watertown and out of Janesville. Temperature right now coming in at 46 degrees. Everybody enjoyed all that sun. Warmer air here, colder air to the north of us. We're going to start tapping into that warmer air when our wind direction, the wind direction this time of year makes a huge difference. A northeasterly wind this time of year is not our friend. Look at the satellite map. We are nice and quiet around here, and that trend will continue for two more days. 44 degrees. That'll be better than what we had today. And lots of sunshine again. Then on Wednesday, lots of sunshine. High temperature sitting 55 degrees. Then on Thursday, which is, of course, opening day, we have that chance of showers. Temperatures hitting 58. That's way above average. Nowhere near records, though. A rainy day on Friday. And then, oh, what is happening here? <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> we may see rain change over to snow. Hey! Well, yeah. Sorry. We're that was not done yet. Uh, mm -hmm. No, we are not done. Uh, so just be ready. We'll keep a close eye on it. What do you say? We'll get there? Or do you say we'll get there? Eventually. One of you guys say it. We can both say it. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there. Eventually. There Positivity. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> An avocado recall. The company recalling its avocados in six states, including Wisconsin, the bacteria the fruit might contain. Then Apple unveils its new video service, how the phone giant plans to compete with Netflix and Amazon.
A California company recalled its avocados in six states, including Wisconsin. The Henry Avocado Corporation issued the recall after its packaging facility tested positive for listeria. The recall includes both conventional and organic avocados. No illnesses have been reported so far. Some doctors groups are calling on the government to impose a tax on sugary drinks. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Heart Association say they hope the tax would help stop kids from drinking soda, sports drinks and juice. The pediatricians say they are seeing more kids being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease and high cholesterol. The American Beverage Association argues children are actually drinking less soda. Apple jumps into the video streaming service. Executives unveiled 